steak, eggs, nuts, ham, and fish. They're all great sources of protein, but what does that mean? What is protein, and what does it do? The human body needs three main macronutrients from the food we eat to keep our body running. Fats, carbohydrates, and of course, proteins. Proteins are involved in just about any activity in the body, and at the cellular level, they pretty much run the cell. Proteins are made up of building blocks called amino acids. These amino acids are linked together through peptide bonds to form proteins anywhere from about 15 amino acids all the way up to almost 30,000. There are at least 10,000 different proteins in our bodies being used as cell signals, enzymes, antibodies, transport, or even structure. A few good examples of these structural proteins are hair, nails, feathers, and muscles. There are so many proteins working constantly, but surprisingly, some of them don't even last very long. They degrade over time, and they usually only last about a day or two. This means we're constantly making these proteins. But how do we do that? The process of protein synthesis can be extremely complicated, especially in about a minute or so, but we'll try and make it as easy and as simple as possible. The process starts in the nucleus of a cell. RNA polymerase, which basically just copies the DNA, transcribes or copies a section of that DNA that codes for a protein. This copy is called messenger RNA, or mRNA. The mRNA leaves the nucleus and enters the cytoplasm, or the rest of the cell. Here, a ribosome uses the mRNA as a guide or a template on how to make the protein. The amino acids that make up the protein are bonded together here. The mRNA is actually broken up into these things called codons, which are actually just three bases long. And then the amino acids are brought to the ribosome by transfer RNA, which attaches to these codons. The tRNA binds to the mRNA, so the amino acids can be bonded together. All these tRNA molecules continuously and very quickly bond to the mRNA until a stop codon appears, and the primary structure of the protein is complete. But we're not done here. The protein then needs to go through a few more steps or processes to be folded into its final shape, and then it'll be ready to do its job. You may think that a lot can go wrong in these processes, and you're actually right. Even though the process is quite effective, mistakes can be made, and irregular proteins can form. Most of the time, it's not a big issue, and they just degrade over time, but sometimes the result can be quite deadly. If you'd like to watch our video about prions, click here. And as always, thanks for watching, and have a super duper delicious day.